Um, okay, right, so we will start to make a move with the webinar. And um, we've got attendees just turning up. And um, I just wanted to try one thing actually. So for all attendees, if you, um, you should have access to the chat box. Um, could you just put in there um, where you're from? Um, if you're from the UK, put in there from the UK, from France, France, put it in there. Uh, anyone from Denmark? Perfect, from America, thank you. Thank you, Ben, Christian, UK. Wow, we've got quite a mixture. Oh, that's brilliant. Mixture France, China, India, South Africa. Right, brilliant, we've got a, a global audience, which is perfect, uh, that's what we want. Uh, I'll let the guys just keep filtering that through. Okay, right. Give it a few more seconds. Okay. So, Sarah's from Chicago. Sorry, sorry. And yeah. Right. Let me just check one last thing, uh, which is participants. Right, okay, I think we'll get going from there. So, let me just put my screen on the next one. Right, so hi guys, uh, my name's uh, Philip English, uh, also known as uh, Robo Phil, and uh, I am uh, one of the TLA Robotics Tech Advocates, and welcome to TLA Farm and Agriculture Robotics Webinar. Uh, just to give you a little bit about myself, um, I've been uh, into robotics ever since I saw this film, which is, uh, I'm sure some of you uh, should remember it, it's Johnny Five from Short Circuit. I think I, uh, I think I must have seen this film when I was about seven or eight years old, and uh, I've been a bit of an enthusiast ever, 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 ever since then. Um, I've been uh, mainly in the, well, I started out in the IT industry when I was 18, and then I was, uh, I was lucky enough to branch out 10 years ago and uh, become co-founder of Robot Center, where I'm currently uh, Chief Operation Officer, COO. Uh, during my time at Robot Center, I've had the privilege to work with companies such as uh, Airbus, Honeywell, Asda, XBO, NHS, and many universities. And uh, my, 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 my main aim is to get organizations uh, robot optimized. And um, I saw be becoming a, a, a volunteer at TLA Ad Advocate Robotics, uh, another way and another means of doing that. So to give you a quick overview of TLA, uh, TLA Robotics is a volunteer group started in 2020 by Thomas Anderson, who's at the top there. And um, it, it's basically to uh, pr promote European and British robotic companies. Uh, the reason being is that more than 80% uh, of funding for companies, um, particularly around the hardware element, has been going over to North America. So the plan is to um, get that trend back so it's more into uh, European and UK businesses. Um, the TLA Group, it stands for Tech London Advocates, uh, which is a free networking group of more than 10,000 tech leaders, entrepreneurs and experts in London, across the UK and in 50 countries around the world. Uh, if you wish to join, simply send us an email and we'll include you in the group. Uh, there's lots of different working groups at TLA, um, everything from 5G to blockchain, uh, from retail tech to food tech. So there's something in there for everyone. Um, as we go through the presentations, uh, you'll be able to ask questions in the questions and answers tab. Um, if you have any questions after each speak, speaker, and then uh, the whole webinar is recorded and we're going to put up on YouTube in a few days time. And uh, don't forget to take screenshots um, so you can keep the contact details of the speakers. The main three aims of our TLA Advocate, Advocate Robotics Group is to encourage increased investment into UK uh, and European startups. Uh, number two, to promote the take up of uh, robots in automation across all industries and uh, to engage more girls and women in the robotics sector. So that's our three core aims 
as part of the group. And with that, so these are our speakers today. So we have 10 speakers. They have uh, uh, five minutes to give us uh, an, a, a presentation uh, of what they're up to. So these guys are obviously um, going to take you quite quickly through uh, the, the, the results that they have and uh, give us a good overview of uh, the agricultural and farming robotic space. Um, they're going to unpack some powerful secrets. So obviously, please um, take, take, take any notes. Um, and they'll be able to position um, you, yourself as a, an expert on the, on the, on the topic as well. Um, the best part of uh, this webinar is that we've got quite a mixture of different companies as well. So you'll be able to see how, uh, what, what, what's going on in a few uh, different areas. And the main thing is really just to, uh, for us to understand and improve uh, the agricultural process and produce more healthier foods for us to eat as well. So obviously it's all about our own eating and health. And with that, I'm going to hand to our first speaker, which is Caroline from Now Technologies, who's going to uh, talk us through the autonomous uh, robot for easier farming. So if I can hand that to you, Caroline. Okay, so we've got the screen. That's looking good. That's it. I was just looking for the unmute uh, okay. button. That's going to be easier this way. Uh, so I'm Caroline from Nayo Technologies, um, European uh, sales manager. And I want to start with a few uh, context. Um, so as we all know, uh, current agriculture is not sustainable, both in terms of uh, environmental impact and in the healthness of food. So on the other hand, uh, the world has long-term food supply demand, calling for strong increase uh, in yield. So in that context, our long-term evolution in agriculture has to be centered on uh, how to sustainably produce more with a better quality. So at NAYO, uh, not only do we want to take part of the intelligence autonomous uh, revolution, but we want to be a leader in changing agriculture for the better. So the idea is to democratize the use of new technologies for all actors in the agricultural world and enable healthier, uh, as you said, Philip, more human, more productive and more environmental friendly agriculture. So to do so, we tackle the three fundamental pillars of autonomic field robotics. First, we ensure providing a platform our customers can rely on in terms of safety and navigation. Safety is definitely key for us. That's the strength of our robots. And the idea is to operate the robot with maximum autonomy. It includes uh, human safety so far, but in the future, we would add crops safety, uh, geofencing and cybersecurity with a target of one operator for a fleet of 50 robots by 2025. I know that's huge. Um, navigation, uh, that includes the route accuracy and the reliability of the robots on various, terra various terrains. Uh, we also take into deep consideration the user experience, meaning the ease of use of the platform, its ergonomy, and its user-friendly interface. The idea is that anyone with very limited training can operate the robot. So 100% of the platform is developed internally uh, with a focus on corporate social responsibility. And second, we want to plug as many implements as possible to that platform to perform various tasks. So far, we are quite advanced on mechanical reading uh, but why not add uh, sensors, seeders, uh, spraying systems, harvesting tools in the future? Here, we have made the choice to integrate state-of-the-art uh, tools from unknown manufacturers. And in terms of analytic, um, the idea is to extract uh, any valuable information from the robot, such as agronomical business insights. So that could be crops counting or diseases identification and or uh, feed predictive models uh, related either to the platform, so predictive maintenance, uh, or to the field, like yield assessment. So here also, um, there are experts in the domain, so we would partner with people who know how to do so. So this vision, we believe it leads to um, better existing usage, time saving, so less workforce to recruit, less harsh working conditions, zero residue, uh, yield increase as well, uh, with less soil compression, and last but not least, uh, you improve the positive brand recognition. So NIO is currently like ready uh, to accompany our customers. Just a few words about the company uh, after like global meaning about uh, robotics. 
So NIO uh, has been founded in 2011 by two robotics engineers with both agronomical background. And we are now a world leader and European reference in agricultural robotics uh, with more than 210 uh, robots working in the fields. Uh, we have a range, as you can see, of three robots and we do target five vertical markets. So vegetable, herbs, arable crops, orchards and vineyards. These robots uh, they are designed initially to weed, uh, who and some can seed and assist at harvest so far, mainly us, the small one. They support uh, both key accounts, so that's agro-industry major players, uh, breeding and seeds companies, or large cooperatives. Uh, but we also work with uh, growers in the daily activities in order to free the operators from time-consuming tasks while increasing profitability and protecting the environment. Um, we do master the entire value chain. We design, assemble, and distribute the company, our customers, and we deeply work um, with the customer uh, in terms of R&D as well. And so it's now a team, and then I'm done. It's a team of 80 uh, qualified people, and we have a global presence, mostly, mostly in Europe, but also in uh, US, Canada, Japan, and New Zealand. So let me know should you have any questions in exactly five minutes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, okay, so the next speaker, we've got uh, Janice um, from Weedbot. And um, with the question, can we use lasers to kill weeds? I'll pass it over to Janice, please. Yep, nice to be here. So I will start to share my screen. Deep fast into today's uh, thematics. Happy to be here and present company Weedbot and we kill weeds with a laser. So can we use lasers to kill weeds? And the simple answer to that is yes, of course. And um, to demonstrate it, we have some pictures of, of uh, weeds treated with laser. So just after the laser treatment, one day after, and after six days, you can see that there is a major uh, difference between those uh, weeds which are not treated and those who are treated. Even though some of weeds can regrow, they still uh, are much, much smaller and have used a lot of energy for that. And the next big question would be why we should use lasers. And the answer is because we need something very precise, very accurate, so we could replace manual weeding as manual weeding is uh, a burden for organic, uh, organic growers. And if you look at the laser weeding, so the weeding is only the one part of whole technology chain. So we need to be able to capture images, recognize which are weeds, which are crops. And then we need a quite sophisticated uh, targeting system uh, to uh, guide the laser just where it's needed. So we have managed all of that and we have developed a laser weeding system that can be attached to the tractor speed up to 300 meters per hour with precision up to two millimeters. And we use a tractor PTO as a power source. Um, we started as the tractor attached unit as we saw that it will be uh, easy accepted by the farmers, but we also intend to make uh, fully autonomous systems uh, in cooperation with robotic platform providers. So you may ask whether it's laser and weeding is new idea, and it's definitely not. So one of the oldest patents that I have found is dated 1972. So this idea is circulating for quite a long time. And the question would be, um, if it's so old, why there are no laser weeders uh, on the fields yet, or at least not, not many of them. And as in any technological um, situations, there are quite a few challenges that needs to be addressed. And those are not, not the simplest ones. And to overcome that, we have uh, assembled a team of uh, specialists from different areas, biology, software development, AI, electronics, mechanical engineering, because all of these are really crucial to get uh, laser reading uh, in the field. 
luckily there are at least few companies that have managed that and uh, uh, there are um, laser weeding systems in the field both uh, autonomous and attached to the tractor is our system so i'll put a short video to get it the feeling how it works how it looks like on the field so this is the carrot field this spring in latvia um, the carrots are small and weeds are also small and in this case uh, we are using a laser system uh, that can go over the ridge there are different kind of ways how farmers grow um, in this case carrots this is also one of the things that uh, the manufacturers need to adapt because there are different kinds of ways so we can grow the same crop in different countries. Um, in fact, we are in UK these days, so we brought our all equipment um, from Latvia to the UK to demonstrate to our partners and to, to get some uh, UK weeds a burn with a laser. Thank you a lot. That was a quick intro from my side and happy to answer some of your questions. Um, and yeah, please feel free to visit our website or uh, follow us on LinkedIn as we try to put all the uh, latest info in our social media. Perfect. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Yeah, it looks very cool with the lasers. I'm quite impressed with that. Um, yeah, any any questions uh, for the attendees, just throw them in the questions and, and answers box for Janice. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, I see one in the chat box, how much damage to the actual plants by laser and how you make sure no harm to plants. So the damage can be adjusted, uh, also the speed of the uh, tractor and the speed of the, of the laser. So we aim to do as little harm as necessary to slow the growth or to kill it, but not too much, not to spend energy and uh, how you make sure that we're not harming plants yeah it, we are working hard not to burn the carrots because farmers are really not happy with uh, carrots uh, treated with laser and yeah this is where our um, ai software comes in perfect thank you janice thank you for that quick answer very much appreciated uh, right, so we move on to Tom now, who's actually out on the field uh, from Autonomous Agro Solutions, and he's going to take us through the uh, Roboti Autonomous Tractor. So I'll hand it over to you, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me, and please excuse the wind. I've just finished a demonstration out on the field. I'm from Autonomous Agri Solutions and we are the UK dealer for Roboti, an autonomous tractor made by Agro and Tele. Our points for Roboti are that it is, um, a, has a conventional three-point hitch which allows farmers to utilise a wide range of existing equipment whilst being powered by a diesel hydraulic setup from two 75 horsepower motor engines this allows farmers to be introduced that needs minimal human input while still using technologies and hardware that they are familiar with. Agro and Tele have manufactured roughly 20 to 25 working across Europe, one working commercially in the UK in Suffolk on a vegetable farm there, and then we have our demonstration unit. Our goal is to bring robotics to farmers and bring a range of automation to farmers in a way that is not only more sustainable, has lower impact on the soil, but is commercially viable. Because I believe there are massive pressures that farmers are facing, especially here in the UK, with labour shortages, constant reduction in chemical use, and having a system that they understand and is clearly relatable to their conventional farming method, whilst being progressive and introducing new technologies, allows farmers to get on very well with the robotic system. So what we have been doing today at our demonstration is 
we have been at a members event showing how Roboti can support lift up the implements, place them back down and use the PTA. We've had some brilliant feedback from all of the farmers who are really excited to see a system that they can that they can understand and can bring them into the future of agriculture. As well as doing this, Roboti is looking forward and the hardware is the least important side of it. It is supported by an excellent navigation system and route planning system that allows it to operate autonomously in the field, but providing a platform that gives opportunity to a range of smart implement technology, vision systems, incorporating spot spraying into their agricultural practices, allowing them to overcome the challenges they're facing while still being kind to the planet. I'd like to take any of your questions now, if you have any, regarding Roboti, but thank you for hearing my short statement there. Perfect. Thank you, Thomas. And, and yeah, and thanks for, for coming uh, live from, uh, of, of, obviously, the field. It's, uh, it's very uh, good to see the robot. And I think um, th this is it for TLA. Uh, eventually, we will be aiming to go back to live uh, presentations um, so we can all um, see ourselves in real life. So that's the plan. So thank you, Thomas. Uh, any questions for Thomas, obviously throw them in uh, the question in the chat and um, then he can answer them. Uh, we're now moving over to Marta uh, from uh, Botra Robotics um, for the E-Terry, uh, the robotic equipment uh, carrier. So I'll put, pass over to Marta. Yes, hi everyone. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Marta. I'm co founder at eTerry. And I'm here today to share with you our approach to agricultural robotics, which is the eTerry, a robotic carrier system that can be suited to individual agricultural applications. And before I present to you the system in detail, I would like to quickly explain why we built the eTerry in the first place. Um, yeah, it was basically designed uh, with the intention to move away from that classical industrial agriculture as we see it, as we see it today, uh, for example, in form of monocultures. Because climate change and the decline of species really has shown that we need to change our ways, meaning that we need more diverse fields that are rich in species and less vulnerable against extreme weather. However, as you might guess, manage, managing such a field, as you can see on the right hand side, is highly complex and farmers are currently not able to realize this effectively. So to be able to do so, we developed eTerry as an easily integratable farming companion that is highly agile and that suits a diverse range of tasks. And that is as well backed by intelligent software, which is a very important part. And yeah, the whole system weighs roughly 110 kilogram in order to be easily handled, to minimize soil compaction and to maximize energy and energy efficiency. The system has proven itself in very rough terrain. It is waterproof and yeah, of course, fully electric. And yeah, it also has a lot of features that all aim to make a farmer's life easier and which I'm going to show you on the following slides. So, well, the most obvious feature is that it is a three wheel system, which brings a extremely high stability as well as agility, especially in terms of turning. And this design also allows a stepless track spacing, which we configure on an individual basis. Um, yeah, besides the width, uh, the system can be adapted in height as well. At the moment, between 500 millimeters and 1,100 millimeters, meaning that it can be used in different growth stages as well as in different cultures at the same time. Yeah, the most important feature, however, is our open interface concept, meaning that we can easily integrate tools and sensors of other manufacturers. Because, yeah, we as a team are deeply convinced that through collaboration, we can achieve more and ultimately build a diverse portfolio of applications which uh, the farmer can choose from according to his or her individual needs. Yeah, and uh, I also brought a short video so you can see the Terry in action. 
um, the idea of being able to transport it in a small box. Martha, I just yeah. want to say, like, we can hear the video, and but it's decreased your voice. Oh, I'll just, I'll just stop it. I just stop the sound and just continue like that, I'd say. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah, at the moment, the Itari can be used for spraying, irrigation, as well as with nitrogen sensors, evaporation sensors, or other monitoring hardware. Um, it is also important to mention that the eTerry is built very robustly with standard industry components, so it can be maintained and repaired very easily. Here you can see the um, height adaptation, which is manually done, but will be electric in the future. And yeah, here you can see you just fold it, load it into the bus, and yeah, it's done. So yeah, that's it from my side. I hope I'll stick to the five minutes. And yeah, I'm happy to answer questions and also make a screenshot of the, of the slide. I'm happy to get in touch with you. Perfect. Thanks, Martha. Thank you. Yeah. And again, feel free to do any screenshots to take uh, like Martha's details or details of any of the speakers. Um, so next one is uh, Florin uh, from Muddy Machines, who's um, going to um, talk through labour shortages and harvest automation. Um, so go for it, Florin. Yes. Hello, everybody. Just a quick housekeeping note. If you just click the pin video on my um, on where you see me so you can see my slides because they're going to appear behind me. I'm not going to share them and it's not, it's not going to blow up for all of you on your on your screens. So here we go. Um, we are we are muddy machines. We build harvest robots for field vegetables. the The problem that we are that we are addressing, or that we that gives the reason for this company to exist, is probably something that, I mean, given this audience, we're all agriculturally minded. I think isn't a new one, right? There is a major major problem of how do we feed nine billion people, and at the same time. There are massive labor shortages in farming. Okay, we have labor shortages mostly in the UK for Brexit, but if you speak to other countries, they have labor shortages for various different reasons. And we can't just import our way out of this problem because importing, especially fresh, fresh, fresh goods, had, comes at a very, very high carbon cost. And I'm sure none of us wants to see the empty supermarket shelves again that we've seen um, during the during the pandemic. So how how can we grow more by not increasing by not getting another planet by not increasing the the, the space of, of soil that we have well data and precision agriculture is certainly um the way forward but how do you how do you solve this with robots you might you might answer so we have a two-tier approach to this so first of all the thing that is most urgent to the farmers that we've been speaking to is the labor shortage so we're building a viable robotic harvesting business to remove the labor bottleneck and provide a reliable and cheaper access to mechanical labor. So the, the farmers are all over us. You know, they're asking, when can I get a robot? When can I get a robot? I cannot get enough people to bring in the harvest anymore. So we've started building an asparagus harvest robot. Looks a bit different. I'll show it in a second. But secondly, because we are during a harvest season, we're in the field every day analyzing the plants that we are picking we are, as a byproduct, creating a tremendous data set on these crops that for the first time will really enable precision agriculture and hopefully drive this change by analyzing and making this data available. I mean, our friends from NAYU, I've seen you're going into the same direction. I think this is something that every robotics or ag tech startup is, is, is aiming for, aware of how valuable the data is that we are, that we are generating. Um, our, our route of entry, like I said, is asparagus harvesting. Um, there are several solutions out there, either mechanical and therefore not economically viable because in selective field vegetables, you need to very carefully select what you're har harvesting every day. And if you're combine harvesting, like cutting off everything at once, 
you may have massive yield losses. There are also a lot of details on why existing robotic solutions leave too much stubble on the field, operate too slowly or are not selective enough. We have now developed a solution together with the largest asparagus farmer here in the UK, which is um, proven to be accurate enough according to the specifications. And we're now raising money. So ringing the fundraising bell here, where we're looking for money to take this machine um, into, into production to harvest several tons worth of it next year, um, in collaboration with a farmer who has already put in a, a, a meaningful pre-order for this. So this is the machine in the field. Up, up there, you see a rig um, carrying about 12 rows worth of boxes that we are replacing. Um, this is a shot of us demonstrating the machine to the owners of, of that farm. Again, these guys, they are growing 45% of the UK's asparagus. They know what they're doing. And we have also very strong uh, relationships with, with other growers here in the UK. We're looking together with them at um, exploring other crops because you know we, what we do for asparagus we want to do for other selectively uh, harvested vegetables you can think of other brassicas um, lettuces etc we've assembled a very powerful team um, of people with robotics backgrounds with machine learning background with design engineering background and yeah once again we are we are fundraising we are on a roadshow right now and we are also hiring because we've won a couple of Innovate UK grants and um, we're staffing our team to, to be re ready to deliver those. Looking forward to your questions in the, in the chat. And again, I think this is an awesome event. Very humble to be here. Thank you. Cool. Perfect. Thanks, Florent. Thank you for the presentation. It's very interesting. Uh, so we will move on to Aren from uh, Pixel Farm Robots. So. Robot One is their solution to support biodiverse farming. So I'll hand it to Arend and, uh, and Cindy. Yeah. I'll get my video thing up. Hope you see something. Yep. All right. <clears throat> so my name is Aaron Kubuk. I'm the founder of Fixed Farm Robotics. Uh, what we do is we build the robot to uh, uh, to initially take care of plants and to help farmers ensure food security uh, and, and help them face the challenges that they, uh, that they have, um, which is, for example, uh, soil depletion and uh, soil densification uh, due to the large machinery and due to the monoculture way of farming. Uh, in that case, you get limitation of water storing capacity. You get issues with uh, uh, climate resilience uh, and uh, they're very dependent on the permitted chemical agents, which they need to get rid of. So how do you help them? Uh, this is a way to, they solve it. And right now they, uh, they put a lot of people just on a, on a tray and uh, do manual labor with it. Now, what, what we came out, what, what they really want is they want control over the weeds without the chemicals. They want uh, less manual labor. They want a high yield. They want a healthy soil to work on. Now, what we've come up with is pixel farming. Well, you see an image down here, uh, what pixel farming can look like. Um, we use robots to reduce the manual labor. You've heard this before, I think. And we use biodiversity to, to replace the chemistry. Um, so by, by combining these technologies uh, and, and use deep learning to manage the complexity, we see with projects that you have 50% more yields per hectare when you do it like that. Um, and what we also found is that the soil life is uh, highly increased. Of course, uh, this helps with the yield. Now to manage this, we built this, uh, this robot one, which has 10 robotic arms on it. And each arm can be steered individually using the software. And that way, um, mimicking the five or five people. Now if we can operate them like a, a traditional farming machine, you can simply transport it using a, a car ambulance or, a, or a, a large truck actually. Now what we've been doing, we've been testing this, this system in a couple of types of soils. So if we've done the simple uh, type in sandy soils, in this case, you see an example where we're hoeing. Um, we've been, we've been, also been testing this in the clay type of soils, which is in the river areas. 
um, which has needs a more robust way of, of mounting tools. Now, what, what is a system? It's a modular system, and you can add different types of tools. This is an example of a, what, what one farmer calls a stinger, where I can simply push back weeds uh, into the soil. Now, for the larger weeds, you can use a gripper tool, uh, which can actually grip things from the soil, but you can also use it to implement uh, or to plant different types of uh, products. Now, the interesting thing uh, you see down here is a streamer where we not remove the weed entirely, but, but we trim it down. So when you have an undercrop uh, in, in, in a multi-cropping system, you can actually manage it down to keep the soil covered and active uh, while having a, a proper uh, field uh, layout and, and, and preventing the, the crops from seeding too soon. Now, to... to support the development of these tools. We have a digital twin where you can actually simulate in real terms what the tool will do on a field. So to test it like that. Now, to help instruct a robot, you need software. Uh, farmers are not uh, programmers, so they need simple tools to instruct the machine what to do. Now, this is an example of the way we train these robots. So roughly what you saw uh, uh, as enabling is, is using these digital tools to help farmers to instruct their robots to, to do their work. This is roughly what I wanted to say. I can fill an hour of your time, but I'm not allowed to down here. So if you have questions, feel free now. Oh, Welcome at- uh... so, Hush. Perfect. Thanks I think me. I'll- Stop my share. No. Thank you for that. No, that's a good overview uh, with the video there. Um, and yeah, and obviously understanding how to support biodiversity in farming. Um, right, next we're gonna move to Alex at LLC Robotech um, for chemical free autonomous weeding. So I'll pass it over to you, Alex, if that's okay. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for the invitation. Can you already see the screen? Yes, we've got your screen there, Alex. Okay, great. So, yes, my name is Alex, and I'm uh, from Robotech Company and uh, presenting here Agrotech project. Uh, it is Agrotech, it is autonomous a based robotic platform for sustainable agriculture. We do not use any chemicals and uh, work with no till methods. Uh, it looks like we do all the same with another. Uh, participants uh, so i will not um, uh, talk about uh, a lot about problem and opportunity but uh, yes we can see that uh, weeds can reduce yields up to 40 percent and cost of the control for of the weeds can be up to 50 percent uh, of the final cost product product cost and also farmers uh, do not want to work with chemicals uh, right now we are on the TRL7 level, we have MVP. It looks like a uh, Mars rover. Uh, you can see in the picture. Uh, we have autonomous navigation already, and uh, we use robotic separation system and uh, computer vision, a uh, few sensors, odometry, and other things. Uh, we work with microwave weeding tool, the same principle like in microwave oven. Uh, on this model, we have one robotic arm delta manipulator that aim in this uh, robotic, uh, that aim in this uh, within microwave tool to the plant that we recognize with computer vision and neural networks. The robot is also uh, autonomous uh, and uh, do not use any chemicals, can work uh, autonomously day and night. Uh, so if it, this is our MVP that we tested right now, but uh, uh, our model that we plan to develop and produce this year, few models like this, uh, looks like this. And it is a bigger, much bigger robot uh, with a 100 kilowatt battery pack on the board. It is like in Tesla Model S. It has uh, eight uh, manipulators with uh, magnetrons. It is for microwave video and uh, it can work at autonomously in the field uh, from 10 to 12 uh, hours, can autonomously go to the recharging and uh, a lot of autonomous robotic things. Uh, 
yes, we also uh, focus it on the organic vegetable farming market. And uh, we use uh, a few uh, business models like uh, uh, paper use licensing. It is uh, when somebody, our partner can produce our robots uh, on the territory with our license, with our uh, production documents. And pay as you go, so it is uh, like a, uh, uh, pay as you go and RAS model. Okay, thank you. Uh, so here it is our competitors. Uh, it is really nice to see that all the robots can do almost the same uh, treatment in weeding, but uh, everybody of us want to find the way for sustainable and uh, pollution, uh, without pollution, pollution free methods. Uh, this is how it looks uh, in the model in our uh, waveguide and horn antenna with uh, microwave energy. And we can see that uh, we can concentrate the big density of the microwave energy in the one point, and uh, we can boil the cells of the plant and destroy the structure of these uh, cells. And right now we have uh, uh, results from conducted experiments when we uh, can boil the plants uh, less than in half of the second. Yeah, the, the weight of these plants is near the 100 uh, milligrams. You can see here uh, our first experiments with microwave. And on the last uh, picture, you can see that uh, our uh, grass is uh, weakened and uh, fell down. This is our action plan. And as I told you, we, can, we plan to produce few uh, models, two models this year, and we will test it with our partners, with our uh, uh, farmers. And right now we are on the uh, early stage. We have only MVP and the age of our project is almost one year. This is our team. We have few software development uh, guys and a uh, few constructors, design constructors. Constructors, uh, Alex Podjachin, it is our CTO and he works with artificial intelligence computer vision and me. Uh, Alex Zinchenko, I'm like a CBDO or CEO of this project. Thank you very much for your attention. Please, I want to answer your questions. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. That's very much appreciated. Yes, yeah, good to see, um, obviously, a way for uh, chemical-free uh, autonomous weeding. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, we'll move on to Tom um, uh, from Oxen Agriculture uh, for revolution in greenhouse uh, the future is now so i'll pass it over to tom if that's okay yeah thank you very much i'll uh, share the screen here yes. Issues here. Just a second. Okay. So, so guys, so why Tom's obviously just sorting that out. And, and any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the questions and answers. We've got uh, Thomas and the team uh, keep an eye on questions for you. And obviously any questions for uh, the speakers as well. There we go. So uh, welcome everybody. So I'll uh, try to give you a, a, a quick overview of what we're doing here at, uh, at Octinium. So we're focusing on creating turnkey robotic solutions from uh, um, seeds to fresh product. So um, we're based on a modular platform, an autonomous platform um, designed for uh, both greenhouses and uh, outdoor operation, uh, monitored, monitored and controlled uh, via cloud interface uh, and with, with a number of, uh, of implements and the most uh, known implements um, that uh, you see popping up uh, online is of course a strawberry picking robot but uh, we have uh, currently we have uh, uh, the platform live in the market for uh, a number of uh, other applications the most important one there is uh, the lumion platform uh, with uvc treatment UVC treatment as an alternative uh, to uh, pesticides uh, to treat powdery mildew. 
uh, especially in strawberries, powdery mildew is really a large problem and is responsible for uh, about 50% of the residues. Um, but um, it's also uh, applicable for tomatoes, for cucumbers, uh, and so on. And we're currently rolling out these uh, systems. Another implement we're working on, and that uh, will be launched shortly after summer, is uh, uh, Curium for uh, crop monitoring. I'll uh, try to give you a bit of an uh, overview of what it uh, looks like in practice. So this is in, a, in an indoor setting um, with, uh, with rails, but uh, it can also work without rails. It can also work uh, in an outdoor setting. Uh, we typically treat during the night because during the night, the dosage you need to, uh, uh, to treat a plant is uh, considerably lower than during the day. Uh, and the system is fully autonomous. It's uh, currently placed in front of the first row by uh, the grower uh, in the evening and then programmed for a, a late start, a bit like your, uh, your coffee maker at, uh, at home. Um, shortly, the system will also be capable to, uh, to start from its uh, um, storage position uh, and move autonomously to the first uh, row. Um, so it switches rows uh, uh, fully autonomously on its own. Um, and one system can tr treat it depends a bit on the on the layout of uh, uh, of the greenhouse or uh, um, or the outdoor growing infrastructure. Uh, but one system can treat one to two hectares uh, per night, and then depending on uh, on the dosage uh, that is required, um, some growers treat uh, once every three days, others uh, every two days. Uh, which means that one system can uh, deal with uh, somewhere between, let's say, three and six hectares uh, of, uh, of treatment. Um, we see currently that uh, we have sold already quite some, uh, some systems um, in Western Europe, Belgium and the Netherlands, uh, but also in Canada, where there is a lot of uh, pressure um, on uh, pesticides, pesticides being banned. Uh, which is uh, a major issue for uh, strawberries. Another application is uh, Curium, where we um, detect uh, berries, um, assess the ripeness, uh, and based on that, of course, can also make predictions on, uh, on the harvest. Uh, that's a system that we plan to uh, release um, in a few months' uh, time, and will also uh, be built on top of the same platform. Um, Longer also with the farmer, so we can uh, easily uh, reuse the platform and put it on, on top. And then, of course, also the uh, straw repicking robots. Um, I'll uh, show some video there uh, as well. We've uh, been working on the development of the strawberry picking robot for a number of, uh, of years now, and we've come to the conclusion that it's uh, also important that the variety of strawberries needs to uh, evolve. Um, over the past uh, year or so, we've uh, slowed down development and focused on a uh, system where uh, we can get uh, faster market traction, like uh, you see. Um, in the next uh, few weeks, uh, let's say somewhere during sum summer, we'll uh, uh, announce a, a large transaction that um, will uh, allow us to scale up our operations uh, quite considerably. Uh, and also will uh, mean that we will branch out into other crops uh, and also bring uh, harvesting robotics uh, to the market again on top of that uh, same uh, platform. What is quite uh, different from our side uh, compared to competitors is that uh, we work with our own custom robotics. We're very much convinced that that is essential to uh, arrive at the right uh, cost level. Um, and in case of the strawberry picking robot, we, like you saw, we pick like a human uh, without a stem. So uh, if um, you want to uh, join us as a customer, as an investor, uh, feel free to, uh, uh, to reach out. Thank you for your attention. Perfect. Thank you, Tom, uh, for the uh, revolution in, in greenhouses there. Yeah, de definitely some interesting robots. Um, Right, so moving on, uh, we've got uh, Amir from uh, Lincoln University. Uh, so I'll, I'll pass it over to you, Amir, if that's okay. Well, oh, you're just on mute, Amir, as well. Oh, 
Can you see my screen now? There we go. Yeah, we can see your screen and you're unmuted. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Amir and I'm an associate professor in the University of Lincoln. And today I'm going to present some of the activities in agro-robotics, uh, agro-robotic domain at the University of Lincoln. Uh, we are a member of uh, Lincoln Center for Autonomous System, uh, which uh, we are focusing, uh, in which we are focusing on different technologies related to robotics, including perception learning, decision making, control interaction, and we are integrating the systems in different uh, application domains, including agri-food, healthcare, intelligent transportation, logistics, nuclear, and service robotics. Our funding body are listed here. Uh, recently, we got the uh, fund is uh, EPSRC uh, funding for the CDT for Center for uh, Doctoral Training in collaboration with University of Cambridge and East of Anglia to train uh, future experts in agri-robotics, uh, 50 uh, CDT students in agri-robotics. Last year, uh, Research England funded a, a Center of Excellence in Agri-Robotics uh, at the University of Lincoln, which to advance uh, the technology in selective harvesting, phenotyping, and crop care. And that's uh, created the Lincoln Agri-Robotics uh, where I'm uh, working currently and leading the selective harvesting. According to the uh, kind of historical interest of the county of uh, Lincolnshire in agriculture, uh, we are uh, focusing on, uh, on agricultural robotics. And one of the main crops that we are uh, trying to uh, develop robotics for is a, a strawberry. Uh, as such, we uh, developed our poly a polytunnel in, at our uh, rice home campus, as you see here, which is uh, several hectares uh, field and in which we have uh, polytunnels for testing development and testing of robotic technology. As you see here, uh, we have a strong uh, connection since four or five years ago uh, with Saga Robotics to develop different aspects of autonomous robots in the field. Uh, we have uh, developed the full autonomy stack for Saga Robotics to do uh, uh, outdoor and indoor navigation. As you see here, this is I'm happy that I'm talking of the uh, several speakers. They uh, describe the problem. So UI treatment is quite important. Uh, we have uh, fleet coordination, as you see here, a uh, fleet of uh, robots can, uh, can do centrally control to do cover uh, a field. Uh, we have recently developed a robot for a robotic phenotyping, which can help growers uh, for breeding and pesticide uh, selection. And also uh, we have developed robots for helping uh, human pickers, assisting human pickers where they are, the human is picking the uh, strawberry and robots are called uh, intelligently by the human to collect the picked uh, strawberries and deliver them to the uh, collection points. So as you see, there are several activities uh, around agricultural robotics and mostly we are focusing on high value crops and in a specific as, uh, a strawberry. So I just speed up this. Uh, as you see here, the human can have interaction with the robot using any device like cell phone or even gesture. So they can call a robot by uh, different gestures to be present at collection point and robots go autonomous, uh, go, goes autonomously there and collect the fruit and then uh, delivers the fruit in the collection points. One of the biggest challenges that we are trying to resolve and in the specific, I'm uh, very involved in that is selective harvesting. As you see, we have developed digital twin for our robot uh, or the robot developed by, by Sago Robotics in order to facilitate the development of the technology. This shows uh, the uh, demonstration that we have for picking a strawberry. So as you see here, this is the Saga developed uh, picking cat, that, which doesn't have any uh, contact with the, uh, with the uh, flesh of the strawberry. So, as such, it does have minimum bruising. So it does uh, pick the strawberry directly into the planets. I can show you some of the cool, uh, let's say, demonstrations. So this is uh, two years ago, we, ha we are uh, much more ad advanced uh, the technology and we are having several versions of this technology. 
So the future of agriculture that we see is kind of uh, precision agriculture and digital farming in which we are using renewable uh, energy uh, with autonomous charging, with integrated uh, uh, cloud computing and uh, using and exploiting 5G and 4G for communication and edge computing. Uh, there are several activities and a spin out in your University of Lincoln, including like crop care and selective harvesting. And if you're interested, please reach out and uh, communicate and contact me. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Amir. Thanks for the overview. Of, uh, see what uh, like Lincoln U University is going uh, is up to. Uh, so we're mo moving on to uh, Gwendolyn next from Fira. It's going to tell us a little bit about um, the Agro uh, Summit a bit later on this year. Yeah. Hi there, thank you for the invitation. Um, so this is Fira, yeah, the, the World Fira, uh, the Agrobotics Forum that takes place uh, this year again in December in a, on a hybrid format. Um, just a quick overview of what is Fira. Fira um, is the leading expert event of the agricultural robotics industry. Uh, that's very interesting what we've heard because I think that maybe Fira can be a new tool for you guys to better understand about agrobotics, about field robotics, and everything uh, about the, um, the industry. In few words, uh, Fira has been launched in 2016 uh, in Toulouse, in the south of France. Um, since then, we've been developing the event with always um, in the heart of the event, um, the knowledge and the skills that we want to provide to all the value chain of the agrobotics industry. So you can find keynotes, workshops, uh, some major roundtables, but also demos of robots and uh, B2B meetings. And of course, an exhibition area where our exhibitors can uh, show their products and services. So as you can see on the, on the figures, the event has been developing uh, a lot. Uh, it's almost double uh, the figures, the, the key figures every year. And especially last year with the pandemic, unfortunately, but at the end for us, it was an opportunity to get uh, even more international in terms of uh, attendees and in terms of uh, robot manufacturers that presented their, um, their product and, uh, and services. Uh, these are key, figure, key figures. We, we aim to gather around 3,000 participants online and on site. Hopefully, we keep finger crossed we can make it uh, on this hybrid format in person also. But um, we also reached the 40 agrobots presented among this year with around 70 exhibitors. Um, with the worldwide audience, that's very important to, to explain that because really people are coming from, I mean, from anywhere in the world. Even if it takes place in France, in Toulouse, it's not in Paris. Uh, yeah, FIRA is the unique event dedicated to the agrobotics industry and really that focuses on this industry. So um, that's why I think people are coming and we, we truly believe that it is a, a global event. In terms of participant types, of course, uh, the heart of the event of the participants are manufacturers and the end users, the farmers and the producers. But at FIRA, we gather all the value chain and the key players with also the technology suppliers, the universities and research centers, the media, the, the media um, trade unions, etc., etc., et because they all need to work together and to have a better understanding of the industry and the uh, of uh, how to tackle challenges of this uh, new industry in agriculture. Uh, as I told you earlier, we have very different formats at FIRA. We have this major keynote with high level uh, and expert contents with, with um, also robot demos. Uh, last year, we had around 30 demos uh, of robots uh, in real condition in fields sometimes broadcasted, sometimes um, in person. Uh, there are also thematic workshops uh, on thematic crops, for example, on thematic functionalities, but also on technologies and uh, other, other thematics such as um, legislation or also many issues that uh, interest the industry. There is also a scientific workshop organized by the French association Rob Agri, and this year in association also with the, the University of California and uh, with Wageningen University and Research. 
um, the exhibition area, of course, and uh, some B2B meetings that you can schedule in advance to make sure that your, your event experience is, uh, is, uh, is the best. And this is uh, a, new, a new service, of course, also at uh, FIRA with the Job Corner, if you're looking for skills and competencies. Some sessions, uh, some focus on some sessions this year uh, for you to have a better understanding of what we can find uh, at FIRA. Uh, farmers draw your robots. So this is really about uh, farmers needs and uh, how they see the, their ideal autonomous machine. So they will explain us uh, what they're looking for. Uh, there is also this uh, kind of battle between uh, robot manufacturers and tractor manufacturers, what they think, what is their vision in terms of automation. There's also a, a brand new session with pitches of startups that want to raise funds. So I've heard some, uh, some of you are, are looking for raising funds. So there will be some uh, call for, for interest for this pitch uh, session uh, for VCs and uh, business angels. Um, a session also about autonomous robots power. Is electricity the best uh, power? A workshop dedicated to, of course, the state of the art of data collection and artificial intelligence. And as I told you, many demos of robots in fields. Just for you to know, uh, we just, it is an exclusivity for UTLA, I have to tell you, because we just launched our web, brand new website. So um, it has been launched today. Uh, there is the early bird rate that you can find uh, on this slide. So it's 99 euro for three days. So um, at FIRA, we think that it's very important that the access is very affordable. Uh, it includes everything like three days in person and or online. And then you can have the access to the platform during six months to go back and replay the sessions, to get in touch with the, the other participants, etc. Uh, it's free for farmers and it's also free for journalists, of course. You can see uh, that there is uh, the link to register. So you can have a look at this uh, website at uh, pira-agtech.com. Uh, and please also feel free to ask your question. Um, and just for you to know, last, uh, this event is organized by GoFar. GoFar is a nonprofit organization uh, that we launched a few years ago with the aim of developing and promoting the agricultural robotics sector worldwide. So we have this main tool, which is FIRA, the event, but we also have, for example, a, a web media called agriculturalrobotics.com. So you can have a look and uh, subscribe to the newsletter if you wish. Uh, thank you for listening. and. Um, please feel free to do this screenshot for, for the contacts. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Thank you very much. Right, so uh, we're doing well. We're on the hour and we've, we've got through the 10 speakers. I think, uh, I think that's probably our limit, I think, for these. Uh, we, I think uh, going any more than 10, I think, is going to be pushing it to get it in the hour. So just want to say thank you for all the speakers. Um, what I'm going to do is just share my screen again quickly. And um, I just want to, uh, I'm just going to flip to my last slide. Sorry, one second. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There's me again. Uh, sorry. Right. Um, yes. So um, for TLA, there is the TLA details. Uh, I don't know why it's uh, not showing my screen properly, but uh, let me just take it out of this mode. Sorry. Let me get to the TLA details again. Right, there's the TLA details for any questions and obviously to join the group. Um, we do these events every couple of months. So the next one, we've got um, the best in French robotics on the 15th of September. And um, I'm probably gonna hand it over to see if there's any other questions that are still answering and um, obviously we're quite keen to keep this at, at an hour um uh, questions here thomas anderson who's our uh, main uh, leader um did, 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 is there any other questions that we need to go through to uh, thomas or we we're we okay to call it there 
I think one of the um, one interesting question might be that's uh, popped up once at least is if uh, companies are using ROS or perhaps how they view ROS. Um, perhaps so we can pitch that to one of the uh, panelists. Should we just select one? Or? Yes. So I will react. Uh, we're we're not using ROS, uh, uh, but we support ROS. So if uh, companies have uh, ROS implementations, ROS tools, ROS applets, you can run them on our machines and that way program what uh, what the machine does without disrupting the safety. I hope this answers the question. This was Arad Kuku from Pixform Robotics. Can I get, just out of curiosity, perhaps yeah. you don't need to answer, but what, what was the main reason for not using ROS? <laughs> uh, too open. Okay, fair enough. And in, in, in terms of quality uh, control, I mean. Because at University of Lincoln, uh, the LCAS is developing uh, a ROS stack and we have our ROS distribution. As such, Soda is using our ROS distribution as well. There are many of the packages which are publicly available. So we are research organizations. We make everything public. Unless uh, there is an IP, let's say, around uh, the specific package which is Saga using, and we don't uh, make it public. But it seems to be quite modular for us and quite powerful in integrating different components in terms of the vision, uh, like uh, SLAM, uh, all the manipulation, all everything we can easily integrate and that makes every effort modular so we don't need to just uh, do a, a lots of uh, try a lot to integrate a, a new component it is very easy so in terms of uh, the integration uh, we prefer to use ROS and as such Saga is using ROS. Interesting Robotech perhaps uh, I saw a note that you use ROS all the time, Pat, you can give us a view on that. Oh, one second, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, uh, we're, we work only on robotics operation system and uh, it is much easier to develop robots uh, with ROS. So we work in, uh, with agriculture robots mm -hmm. uh, less than a year, but we already have uh, uh, Precisely autonomous navigation, uh, we use uh, common filter, uh, we use uh, uh, computer vision and uh, another um, uh, features that we have in open source in uh, robotics operation system. And it is a lot of uh, specialists, but not in Ukraine, but in, in other countries, we have a lot of uh, spe uh, specialists that we can attract to development. So, and right now we, uh, just a week ago, we uh, established a company, educational company, that will uh, uh, teach how to use ROS for developers in Ukraine, because it is only 10 persons, 10 uh, developers in Ukraine that uh, use ro robotics operation system, and it is hard to work without, uh, without uh, developers, without specialists. So we launched a company called BotShare, and uh, we will uh, teach developers how to work with us. So it, will, it is uh, really interesting for us. Excellent. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. No, that's fine. Well, um, thanks, Thomas. Thank you. Um, well, yeah. So um, I think we'll, we'll call it a day there. And um, we'll see any uh, questions. Please feel free to reach out to the speakers. And uh, a big thank you to all the speakers and um, giving us a run through of the latest farming and agricultural robotic te 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 technologies. Certainly very, very uh, interesting from this side. And I uh, hope everyone uh, has a very uh, enjoyable evening. I know we've got the football on who is watching it. So uh, we'll see how that goes as well. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye.